live from WPRI 12. This is Eyewitness News at 5.30. Coverage you can count on. Now at 5.30, bold new warning. The makers of a popular over-the-counter pain medication want you to know about a potentially fatal side effect. Supersized salaries fast food workers across the country take to the streets calling for restaurants to nearly double their wages. First at 5.30 tonight, stepping up patrols. Providence police are increasing security near Brown University as college students head back to class. Those additional officers are in response to a string of violent crimes last spring. It's our top local story at 5.30. Eyewitness News reporter Andrew Adamson has more from the Providence Mobile Newsroom. Thayer Street on the east side of Providence has been in the news a lot lately and not necessarily for the right reasons. Due to the increased crime in the area, Providence police are stepping up their efforts. We asked locals if they think it'll make a difference. Ashe Shaith is one of thousands of Brown University students who just returned to campus for the new school year. While he's excited to be back, Shaith worries about his safety, especially in the area of Thayer Street. You do feel a bit scared because a lot of the times you're here at night late. You don't know what's going to happen if you're alone. According to Providence Police Captain George Stamatakis, what's happened is an increase in crime in the area. One such instance back in May involved a Brown University basketball player. Joseph Sharkey suffered serious head injuries when he was allegedly assaulted on the corner of Thayer and George Streets after dark. Stamatakis says many of these crimes happen at night. We've looked at the data and we focused on that time as being the busiest, where there's the most need and the most potential for violence or crime. To cut down on that potential, Providence Police have teamed up with Brown University and the Thayer Street District Management Authority to start adding extra patrols in the area on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Stamatakis believes it's already made a difference. We've noticed a, de a decrease in uh, criminal activity in the area. They're highly visible. Uh, people appreciate the safety and security they provide. So far, local residents seem to be mixed on the increased police presence. I don't think making increasing police is going to make much difference. This is a public area, so well, the more they can try to do with patrols, like, that's the best they can do. Providence police tell me that this is a temporary patrol situation and they'll continue to monitor it as time goes on. With the Providence Mobile Newsroom, Andrew Adamson, Eyewitness News. New at 5.30, two brothers are indicted after allegedly trying to defraud the Boston Marathon Victims Fund. The men allegedly made a fake $2 million claim to the one fund for their aunt, who's been dead for quite some time now. Brandon Mattier and Dominique Grice of Boston are facing several charges, including conspiracy to commit larceny and identity theft. Prosecutors say they attended a private dinner for the victims and then planned to test drive a new Mercedes when the check arrived. Tonight, authorities are investigating a car accident that claimed the life of a Cranston man. 69-year-old Thomas Rayo died after his car hit a guardrail on an exit ramp in downtown Providence just after midnight. Rayo was driving east on Route 6 when his car hit signpost and then flipped onto its side. The 69-year-old became trapped in the car and was later pronounced dead at Rhode Island Hospital. Police are awaiting the results of an autopsy to see if he may have suffered a medical issue. From the southeastern Massachusetts Mobile Newsroom, Eyewitness News moves to New Bedford, where a Domino's Pizza delivery driver is reportedly robbed at knife point. According to the New Bedford Standard Times, the worker was parked at a stop sign on Mill Street Tuesday night when he says the man walked up to him, pulled out a knife, and stole his money and cell phone. Police are looking for the suspect. Right now, fast food workers across the country are striking, demanding supersized salaries. Hundreds of employees walked out of their jobs today in a nationwide protest. They're calling on their employers to nearly double their wages. Here in Boston, workers say the restaurants serve up affordable meals, but they can't afford to live on what they're paid. Eyewitness News reporter Edward Lawrence joins us now with the developing details. Fast food workers walked off the job in cities from coast to coast. Make your way to super from a march on Burger King in New York to a noisy protest inside a St. Louis McDonald's to the hundreds who took to the streets in Los Angeles. 
The workers want to supersize their salaries to $15 an hour, more than double the federal minimum wage. Single mom Jacqueline Martinez makes $8 an hour at McDonald's, trying to support her daughter. They don't pay enough. We need to support a lot. Uh, we need to pay babysitters, bills, rent. Nationally, fast food workers average about $9 an hour. The National Restaurant Association says that only about 5% of restaurant workers actually make minimum wage. Restaurant industry workers that are earning the starting wage uh, are not typically the primary breadwinner in their family, and they're usually supplementing an income that has an average household income over $62,000 a year. Alberto Castro makes $8 an hour at a Burger King in L.A. He says he had to drop out of college because he couldn't afford it, along with helping his family. I believe uh, our message has been sent, and hopefully they hear our voice. McDonald's and Burger King say they don't decide salaries. That's up to the individuals who own the franchises. President Obama is pushing to boost the minimum wage from $7.25 an hour to $9 an hour. Now, here's Chief Meteorologist Tony Petrarca with your first forecast. Well, certainly does not feel like summer today. High temperatures only in the upper 60s to low 70s. Still hanging on to these stubborn low clouds. Cool temperatures, a lot of moisture in the air. The humidity is high. Now, we go to live pinpoint Doppler 12 radar, and we're certainly not tracking any kind of widespread rain or downpours or thunder. However, uh, off and on bits of uh, sprinkles and mist coming through every now and then, and we'll keep that in the forecast throughout the, at least the early evening hours. You can see some fog off in the distance, the low clouds in Providence right now. The temperature only 66, hard to believe for late August on a northeast breeze coming in at 15 with high humidity at 84%. So heading out this evening, don't expect to get soaked. However, some mist or some drizzle every now and then can't be ruled out under mainly cloudy skies by midnight, the temperature at 60. I'll let you know when the warm sunshine will return. Seven-day future cast coming up in just a bit. Time now for Jam Cam Traffic. We'll get a check on the roads with Jay Rogers. Right now, traffic is heavy and slow. 95 northbound from Thurber's Avenue up to exit 23. We're even seeing delays from around exit 16. Now, on the southbound side, you're still looking a bit busy, but uh, traffic is moving along better. Elsewhere, 24 southbound and southeastern Mass and the rain of Taunton stretch looking a little bit slow from exit 15 down to uh, Route 140. Back out to the highways we go now, and if you're uh, traveling on 295, getting off at uh, exit 7, Route 44. Watch out for slow traffic there. Live with your Jam Cam Traffic, I'm Jay Rogers, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Jay. More coverage you can count on. Coming up new at 5.30, casino plans. Mohegan Sun unveils new details about a deal to bring a resort casino to one Massachusetts town. A new label, a potentially deadly side effect, will soon be plastered on a popular pain pill bottle. We'll tell you why. Then exotic dancer charged with sexual assault. Coming up new at 6, we've obtained the court documents in the alleged case. We'll tell you what we found following the suspect's day in court. New at 5.30 tonight, Boston police are investigating after a woman is dead and two others are hospitalized following an apparent drug overdose. Now, the Pinpoint News Tracker shows you where it happened here at a House of Blues on Lansdowne Street. That's right near Fenway Park. Police were called there early Wednesday morning after all three were taken to the hospital. The club voluntarily closed last night. The owners are working with authorities. Police in Peabody, Massachusetts are looking for an alleged serial shoplifter. Our CBS affiliate in Boston, WBZ-TV, reports this woman seen in this surveillance photo may be linked to more than $100,000 in thefts. Police say she stole from stores in Massachusetts and New Hampshire. We are tracking new details on a casino deal between Mohegan Sun and the town of Palmer, Massachusetts. Under a host community agreement unveiled today, the proposed resort casino would provide the town with nearly $3 million in upfront payments and more than $16 million in estimated annual revenue. The nearly $1 billion plan would also include upgrades to the Massachusetts Turnpike Interchange, two hotels, and a water park. Coming up next... If your insurance company ever denied coverage for something you felt you needed, then you can totally relate to this next story. I'm Susan Hogan. I'll have it coming up. Well, certainly does not feel like the season. I'll let you know when things will get back on track. Your Futurecast holiday weekend Futurecast coming up next. And coming up new at 6, we're tracking developing details on a local oil spill. We'll explain how an already bad situation could have been much worse. 
Time now for Eyewitness News. Call 12 for action. Coverage denied. How many times have you heard that from your insurance company? A Westport woman wasn't about to take no for an answer after her insurance company refused to pay for prescription food. She says she needed to stay alive. So she turned to problem solver Susan Hogan for help. Susan joins us now live with her story. That's right, we have all been there when our insurance company denies coverage for something we need. It's not only frustrating, but it can be downright scary. For this Westport woman, she says it was a matter of life and death. This is a thousand mils. These cans of liquid food are all Judy Michaud is living on. After battling cancer for months, she's on a feeding tube and she says she lives solely on this liquid diet to survive. This is not a supplemental drink. This isn't, I can't go to and pick up a six pack of Insura. This is, this is this my food. This is my survival. Judy says she needs six cans a day and at $50 a case, she can't afford it and was hoping her insurance company would cover the cost. But she says United Healthcare denied her coverage. And in this letter she showed us, the insurer considers liquid prescription food, nutrition. The oncologist, to my radiologist, they wrote letters of medical necessity. They still said, nope, we're not paying for it. Without enough money to pay for six cans a day, Judy says she was forced to give herself less, sometimes a lot less. Sometimes I was doing one can a day. I couldn't afford it. Down to under 100 pounds and feeling helpless, Judy called 12 for action. I saw your commercial on TV, and I kept on saying, I'm going to call, I'm going to call, I'm going to call. And one day I said, I'm calling. <laughs> And I did. <laughs> Call 12 for Action reached out to United Healthcare, and because of privacy laws, they couldn't speak specifically about Judy's case, but they promised to look into it. Well, they did, because a short time later, Judy got a call from the insurance company, and they made an exception. They called and said, oh, we're going to pay. Well, now they're going to pay for the food. And even though Judy would much prefer a real meal, for now, she's just happy that this is one big hurdle she no longer has to fight. Problem solved. Now, United Healthcare confirmed with us that they did resolve this case. Call 12 for Action did ask them if they could elaborate as to what changed their mind, and we were told they had nothing more to add. And if you have a consumer problem you need help solving, contact our Call 12 for Action Center Monday through Thursday from 11 until 1. Our hotline is 228-1850. Or if you're interested in becoming a Call 12 for Action volunteer with me, you can call that same number you see right there on your screen. I'm problem solver Susan Hogan, Eyewitness News. We have an Eyewitness News alert now involving Tylenol. A popular pain reliever will soon have red warnings on its bottles sold in the U.S., alerting users to the potentially fatal risk of taking too much. Johnson & Johnson says the warning will make it clear the over-the-counter drug contains acetaminophen. The pain-relieving ingredient is the nation's leading cause of sudden liver failure. Covering the economy now, more people are buying homes in the Bay State. New numbers show July was the best month for home sales in Massachusetts in years. Two organizations compared numbers from last month to July 2012. The Massachusetts Association of Realtors says home sales increased by 20% in July. The Boston-based Warren Group reports an 18% jump, the highest sales in a single month since June 2006. Now, here's Chief Meteorologist Tony Petrarca with your live Pinpoint Doppler 12 Futurecast. Well, still hanging on to the low clouds and uh, certainly cool temperatures for this time of year. It does not feel like summer as we check out live pinpoint Doppler 12 radar. And we certainly don't see any widespread thunderstorms and downpours. But every now and then, and this has really been occurring all day long, an occasional passing sprinkle or some mist. And that'll be the case at least the first part of the night. But as far as soaking rains, let's say you're getting out of the car, you're running some errands. I don't see that. Just kind of a nuisance stuff here. Temperatures cool, obviously, upper 60s to 70s in Providence. The westerly at 76 and Groton 77, there's a little splash of sun down here for a short time. And as a result, the temperature responded nicely. But the cloud cover for most of the day, keeping temperatures cool, still gray skies in Providence right now. And really most locations, 66. Block Island, 72. Newport, 65. And New Bedford at 65 degrees. We should be at least, do the math here, 10. And in some cases, uh, 15 degrees warmer by tomorrow afternoon. That's more like it. As we check out the conditions right now, you can see that temperatures remain on the cool side. Uh, 
Clouds socked in now across most of eastern New England. You can see out towards uh, upstate New York and uh, Pennsylvania skies have cleared out despite a couple of showers out here. Some of this drier and clearer air uh, headed our way for very late tonight and especially for tomorrow. Let's check out the temperatures starting off at uh, 7 o'clock this evening with readings in the upper 60s. We'll head down to around 61, 62 for the overnight hours by 5 o'clock in the morning. But notice the temperature starting to respond to increasing amounts of sunshine by noontime. It's already 74 and we're getting closer to uh, 80 degrees by the afternoon or mid afternoon and slightly cooler along the uh, south shore. So a nice warm up on the way. Nothing excessive, but you'll notice it should be warmer tomorrow compared to this afternoon. Clouds, a little bit of fog and occasional sprinkles this evening. Temperature at 59 degrees tomorrow morning. Any early morning clouds at sunrise uh, lifting or burning off to mainly sunshine. Temperature heading up to 72 by mid to late morning and closer to 80 by tomorrow afternoon. Drier on a southwest breeze at, at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Seven day future cast shows that the weather still looking OK, though more humid on Saturday, 82. Still keeping the chance of at least scattered showers and thunderstorms both the Sunday and the holiday Monday. Uh, but there's still opportunities or there'll be dry periods as well. So opportunities both of these days to get outdoors. But at the same time, unfortunately, there will be some interruptions, a lower 80s for daytime highs and the beach weather certainly better tomorrow, uh, becoming sunny by mid morning air temperature at 76. Water temperature is still warm. It's been running in the upper 60s to low 70s most of the summer. And again, looking OK for Saturday and then those scattered showers and uh, isolated thunderstorms both Sunday and Labor Day Monday. Showers linger into Tuesday morning, clearing by midweek and cooler with temps in the upper 70s. All right, Tony, thank you. Coming up next. If you're thinking about throwing away your clothes, which are not in such good condition, think again. There's now a better place to put them. I'm meteorologist Pete Mangione, and I'll have the story coming up. Then new at 6, Block Party, a cash-strapped city, is celebrating a big anniversary during tough economic times, where they're alive for what they're hoping to gain from this major milestone. Eyewitness News on WPRI 12 is coverage you can count on. The latest developments now on the massive wildfire in California. Firefighters are gaining more ground on the fire that is burning near Yosemite National Park. 30% of the blaze is now contained. Dry conditions and rough terrain has made the fire very difficult to contain. Firefighters hope to have the rim fire surrounded within a few weeks. Here at 530, out with the old and in with the new. As kids head back to school, they will probably be sporting some new clothes. But before you get rid of last year's styles, new rules have changed the way to donate used clothes. Now, nothing is off limits. Eyewitness News Green Team reporter Pete Mangione has the details that are new at 530 tonight. Most of us know that clothes that are in pretty good shape, like the shirt, can be donated. But now you can donate clothes that aren't in such great condition. If you're trying to clean house as the kids go back to school this week, your first temptation might be to throw this old article of clothing away. But don't, because things like this can now be recycled. So that includes your clothing that's torn or ripped, your stained shirt, your single sock that you can't find the match to. Crystal Noiser from the Rhode Island Resource Recovery Corporation says as long as the clothes are dry and don't have a bad odor, they'll accept almost any type of textile in a white bin like this. Most cities and towns will have a bin like this in their municipal recycling center or the waste transfer station. Using EPA estimates, Noiser tells Eyewitness News that the average American throws away about 70 pounds of clothing every year. Those extra pounds end up here at the Rhode Island landfill and others across the country. But when you drop that old ratty shirt off into a bin, it can get made into new clothes, rags, and if that's not an option... The rest of it will go to a textile recycler. It'll get ground up, be turned into the fibers again, and they'll use that to make things like insulation and automobiles. And you can bring in your donations here at the Salvation Army or other grocery stores which have bins around the area. I'm meteorologist Pete Mangione, Eyewitness News. There is more local coverage ahead on Eyewitness News at 6. Susan Roberts is here now with the stories you'll see new in just a few minutes. Coming up, an unexpected, unexpected closure left hundreds of students in the lurch. And new at 6, we're checking in with some of them almost a year after the Sawyer School shut down. Plus a million dollar makeover, a Rhode Island church getting a big upgrade. We're getting a sneak peek at some of the changes. Both stories are new at 6.